Hello and welcome. When things became so tough he couldn't afford to feed his family, this artist decided to take a radical turn in the way he worked. Creating what he calls Paint Jam has made him a celebrity act in high demand across the world. This week on One on One, meet the award-winning caricaturist and performing artist, Dan Dunn. There are few performers who can match the energy of Dan Dunn, an artist who spent much of his life struggling to make a living from his passion for his craft. He started drawing caricatures in 1977, working year after year in Houston, the town where he studied. He became a founding member of the National Caricaturist Network and served as its president, but it never paid off in a big way financially. It was only when things got desperate and he was very heavily in debt that Dunn came up with an idea that would eventually turn his life around. The award-winning caricaturist developed a frenzied style of painting on stage he called Paint Jam, which involves a high-energy experience where he throws himself at the canvas in what looks like random strokes, only to reveal a remarkable piece in the final moments. Dan, I'm glad to have you in front of me, a real character. Oh, it's wonderful being here. You're, you're, you're booked up a year in advance. You must be doing something right. Well, I don't know what we're doing, but we are booked. It's crazy. Now, what is it? I mean, what is it about your, your style? I mean, you, you've obviously got this uh, unique style that's very much in, in demand. What is it about my style? Well, it, it's all about surprise. I mean, you know, I, I try, I learn a painting, I memorize it, I learn it upside down, and then I leave out the key features. So it just looks like abstract art. And then the last 30 seconds, all of a sudden it becomes Ray Charles or Elvis or whatever I'm doing. And it just hits people between the, it's like a magic trick and you feel the electricity through the audience. I'm on stage and I can just feel the electricity of people <gasps> all at once, like getting it. And it's very, it's very exciting, very fun. It's very showmanship, isn't it? Because you're, you're a showman as well. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, I was a musician for 10 years as well. So I love uh, the stage is just where I love to be. It's now, fun. Now this paint jam style that, that you've, you've made your name with and, and sort of you know, created this, this whole image with, it, it's doing well, obviously. It started in a very strange way, though, didn't it? You had, you had uh, the Ray, Ray Ch uh, Charles painting that, uh, that you, you managed to get onto YouTube. Uh, tell me about that. I have five children, and as they got older, I was a caricature artist. I was a caricature artist for 30 years. And I think that's obviously where I learned to draw the face, just over and over 200 events a year. And I was actually famous in America for doing caricatures. Uh, I did, I was uh, National Caricatures Network, second place and third place in the nation in national competition. I made very good money, but I had five children. And as they got older, then we started putting kids through college and we started, they, their needs increased. And we live very modestly and we're, I fix all my own cars and we did th whatever we could to, to economize, but it just got to be too much. And my wife said, what are we gonna do? And I said, well, I'm gonna rent a mini warehouse, I'm gonna drape it in plastic and I'm gonna start throwing paint. So that's what we did. We went to seven mini warehouses before we found someone that would let us occupy the space. And, uh, and we went in and we started uh, throwing paint and right from the beginning, I said, oh, you know, I did a big painting of Frankenstein and I saw the color, the, the green and the blue. And I just went, I love this. I love it. You know, the uh, place didn't have a restroom. It had air conditioning, but it wasn't turned down low. But I would go out and pour my paint down a drain at night. I just, it had nothing. I'd had a garden hose and, uh, but it was heaven. I just loved it. It was my studio, you know. Obviously you enjoy it and, and that comes across when, when you do the show. How essential is it to have that enjoyment to come through in the actual picture? Uh, I don't know how essential it is. All I know is that as an artist, I've been busting my butt for 30 years and making a living, just barely making a living and being successful at what I do. I was the most successful caricaturist in Houston. I was one of the tops in the nation. I was doing trade shows, but still, I paid a lot of dues for a lot of years and all of a sudden to do something that people are excited about and fun, it's, it's just heaven for me. Uh, it's middle-aged crazy, you know, some guys get sports cars. I started this at 45 years old and, uh, and now I'm 50 
and we're just having the time of our lives. I want to take you back through your early childhood to see how this all sort of came about, how you, your character was formed. You were born in Houston. Born in uh, Houston. And uh, just tell me the, about those early childhood days. What really occupied your time, your earliest memories? Uh, well, my mother would always ask me uh, to, you know, to, like she'd say, to occupy me, to keep me out of trouble. She would say, well, draw me an elephant. I'd draw her an elephant. She'd say, well, that's really good. Can you draw a giraffe? Sure. And, you know, this, this went on. And later on in life, I said, well, you know, it's because of you, because you made me draw those elephants and giraffes. She says, I couldn't stop you. I would do anything to keep you out of trouble. You were so busy, you know. What influence? So your mother actually sort of encouraged the art. What influence she's, very, she's very creative, my mother. She makes cakes, and she's, she's very creative. Uh, my your father? Fa he's more of an engineer type. He's, he could fix anything. He restores cars and uh, refrigerators. Doesn't matter what it is, he could, he could work on them. What did they want you to be? I mean, obviously, you ended up as an artist, and you're very successful with it now. But what did they imagine you would do when you were young? Well, I didn't do well in school. I don't know if I've got ADD or, or what, but I didn't do very well in school. And in the ninth grade, uh, I, did, I just gave up, and I flunked the ninth grade. And so they but had... of course, no one really knew ADD, attention, deficit disorder. I don't know if days, I have ADD. You know? I just know that yeah. school and me, I had, do have a short attention span, but uh, school and me didn't do very well. And uh, so they had me tested. He said, well, dad was in personnel with uh, Exxon. At the time, it was Humble Oil. So he was the vice president of personnel. So uh, he, said, uh, he said, well, we're going to have him tested. So they had me tested. Uh, and they put me through tests for a week. And they said, well, Dan's going to either end up in prison or he's going to, um, you know, amount to nothing or he'll change. But he's 97% in the nation in art. So send him to art school and get off his back. So yeah, I went back to high school then, and that was a turning point for me. And then I did well in high school and went on to college and went to art school and uh, had a great time. Now, did, so was art a natural thing for you in the sense that oh, you're yeah. naturally a good artist? Oh yeah, well you're a musician, you know. You just, I'm a musician as well, I played guitar. Uh, you just pick it up. Yeah, but you didn't have to sort of work at it because I mean you have an well, I do incredible have ability. You do well, have to. I, well, the, the average artist with training will outperform the best artist with no formal training, in my opinion. You know, if you, I had wonderful teachers in art school. Harry Asian was Texas State artist. He was an impressionist. Thank God for him. He taught me color. You know, uh, with caricatures, I worked with the great Nick Polidorus in Houston, one of the top people I've ever known, just the most amazing artist I've ever known. Uh, Bill Hughes, who uh, uh, illustrates uh, comics for Star Wars, George Lucas, uh, wonderful people that I had the opportunity to work day in, day out with. And then you, you formally trained, actually, at Sam Houston uh, State University. Well, yeah, for uh, studied painting with a sculpture minor. But I wonder, when you have a natural talent like you do, does formal training hinder you? Do you feel caged in? No. No, it gives you foundation. Yeah, absolutely. I have, I, you know, that's the thing. When, as an artist, people would come to me and they would say, can you paint a portrait or can you paint a landscape or can you do a, a picture of a guy in a sports car or anything they asked me to do, I would say, yeah, because, because I had done so many things in art school that, you know, even sculpture or whatever, you know. No, but beyond being technically good and, you know, being able to express yourself on paper, there's also the skill of the content being relevant and meaning something to people. And it seems that that's what you're able to do. Is it, so do you have to study it? Do you, when someone comes to you and says, I want a caricature, do you have to say, well, like, let's find out what, what makes this person tick and then, and then you know, incorporate that? Well, with caricature, yeah, you have to find... That's a, that's a very good question, Riz. Um, with caricature, you're looking for the... Uh, and you know this. You're looking for the... Like somebody will say to me, here, do my boss, and they'll give me one photo. I don't know if that's a good photo of their boss or not. You know, with a celebrity... I'll look through hundreds of photos and I'll find one and I go, that's him. That's the essence of the guy, you know? And sometimes I'll work from several photos and I'll fudge something like, this is the right angle, but the mouth isn't right. So you take the mouth from something else because it's the right expression. And some people like, uh, oh, uh, Marilyn Monroe or um, uh, uh, Shatner, William Shatner. Um, it's not how they look, it's how they act. 
like this, <laughs> and you can't get it on paper. Right. And Marilyn Monroe, you cannot get her on paper because it's how she moved and not how she, phys her physicality. Pictures never looked like her. So I see celebrity photos and they give me what they want. I see pictures of Tiger Woods like this. And he's all about the smile, you know? You know what I'm saying? As a caricaturist, you understand exactly what I'm saying. Well, now, you, you, so you got married, you know, uh, wonderful, your wife stood behind you. You had five kids. I have five beautiful, wonderful kids. Do you encourage them to follow your path? Do you want them to be artists? Do you want them to express themselves? <laughs> they don't want anything to do. <laughs> I don't know whether they've seen how hard I work. The youngest one, Patrick, is very talented. Uh, I've got a girl, she's 97% she's in the nation in English. She's studying college. My son is 21, he travels with me as road manager, he's more of an engineer type. Uh, doesn't draw, he hates the question. Uh, my other two girls are very creative, they can paint and draw and everything, but one is very theatrical. She's got her own magic show this summer working with a professional magician and they're doing library shows in Houston, uh, or actually in Texas, all over Texas. So and still, still a creative family in effect. It's a very, my kids are, my house is so boring and my kids are painting the furniture uh, different colors and they're saying, this house is so boring, you're an artist, it's got to be an artist house, everything's painted white. And I'm like, I like white, it shows off the paintings, you know. <laughs> well, Dan, I've got lots more questions for you, we're going to take a short break here, we'll be back with more one-on-one -on -one in just a moment.